in a world where Microsoft virtualization is still considered to be the underdog by some. The Hyper-V Amigos enlighten the IT crowds on how they could very well be mistaken. So, hi Didier, welcome back to the next episode of the Hyper-V Amigo Showcast. It, it's been a while, right? It's been a while. You've grown a beard. Yeah. It was so long ago, so I have to, had to grow in a beard. Uh, this is why, uh, because I'm acting again this summer and uh, the play is in the, in, in the time frame of Jesus, Jesus Christ. And so, of course, there, every man had, had a beard in that time frame. But uh, let's not talk about my acting and my beard. Uh, let's talk about... Uh, the Hyper-V Amigo Showcast. We want to do some nice stuff, right? Yeah, well, let's, let's, let's show you a couple of items we're going to be discussing at a conference we might mention. Yes? Yes, there is this uh, uh, nice conference you are organizing in May, May 12th, yes. if I'm correct. And uh, many of our fellow MVPs will be presenting at that one, including some, uh, let's say, uh, employees of Microsoft themselves will be coming along. You're right. So it's looking very promising to me. It's going to be a great one. And I've, uh, I have the, the honor of presenting on failover clustering enhancements in Windows Server 2016. And I like that subject because it's, it's uh, uh, a sequel, almost, to another presentation I did in Germany at the Technical uh, Summit on what's new in failover clustering in 2012 R2. Yeah. And a lot of those improvements are still very valid, of course, but they are being enhanced uh, yet again. So if you haven't seen that uh, Channel 9 video yet, I advise you before you come to uh, this conference that you look at it and then you'll be up to speed to find out what's new yet again in Windows Server 2016. And it does have some very nice additions. I won't mention them all because you still have to have a reason to come to the conference. But we'll just walk through some of the, of the less sexy ones that are still very interesting. Yeah, so uh, I remember your presentation very well. It was 2014 at the Technical Summit. I assume it was in, was it in Berlin? Uh, was it was it was in Berlin? Yes. Yes, and, uh, and I, I flew in from Seattle. Right. And right. I jumped on the plane again to fly to Berlin. <laughs> yes. I was jet lagged completely. It was in November. It was very close, and actually, you did a very nice job, and you ranked very high in the in the speaker rankings. I remember you were the the best IT pro speaker. I okay. I, I think, and uh, I took this uh, this to ask you to do a cluster enhancement session uh, for the upcoming Windows Server 2016 and I hope it will be as good as at the Technical Summit. Well, the demos will still be on preview code, so yeah. some of them, I've been trying to get to treat them to make them a bit more smooth, but some of them are just like, okay, we need to fix this. But they're working on that one, so that shouldn't be an issue. So let, let's do uh, maybe uh, a little preview of the conference after the clustering stuff, because as you mentioned, uh, we have some great MVPs there, friends of us. Uh, <coughs> I nearly got a anyone uh, from Europe and uh, from Germany I, I, I wanted to have. I had only <coughs> two fellows who had to, to cancel. One of them is our friend from Weem. Uh, he has an appointment in, in, in May. So first uh, he was there in the conference, but he had uh, to cancel, and uh, I'm sorry for that. But every everybody else uh, uh, is there, and uh, let's let's talk after your preview of uh, the cluster enhancements, okay? So, without further ado, let's dive in a couple of the things you need to be aware of at the moment. Uh, 2016 Windows Server 2016 is a technical preview v4. Yeah, uh, uh, Didier, wait, uh, you are a little bit, um, I can't hear you very well. Maybe you can put the microphone a little bit more. Yes, please. Thank you. Let's try this again. Yeah. <coughs> oh, you're coughing. I hear it. Okay. So, no, that you can hear. Cool. 
So we're at technical preview four. That means that when you use some of the tools, uh, you might see some funky things. <laughs> like all the new and enhanced features, they are not completely supported or even implemented yet in the cluster validation wizard. So that <laughs> might throw you off once in a while. Now the aim, of course, is to have that fixed by RTM to make sure that that cluster validation is and remains your close, dear friend that will advise you when things are not as they are supposed to be. Uh, and I can't uh, let's stress this enough that most people should really pay a bit more attention to cluster validation wizard. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things they were working on is improving uh, troubleshooting. So. Uh, get cluster log is that little PowerShell commandlet that will be your friend if things do go wrong because it allows you to gather all the possible information you need to ship off to Microsoft to get support. Now, it had been improved before and now they've added some small yet very interesting uh, enhancements yet again. Uh, now it's very clear what time zone you are using and dumping into your uh, logs because you could already say that you were using local time in the in the current version, but now it actually pastes that into the log and shows, look, this is what you're doing, this is what you're using, and it also, also gives you the offset with UTC or GMT if you want. So that's kind of cool. Then the cluster objects are uh, logged in there uh, together in a in a very handy format that's comma separated value in this case. So CSV here stands for comma separated value, not clustered shared volume, just 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 to make sure that everybody gets that one. Uh, but it makes it very easy to take that information out of there and put it in a, in a database, Excel, or whatever tool you need yeah. uh, to work with. What they also did is they added uh, an extra event log uh, that they also add into the get cluster log uh, when you run it. Uh, Normally, when you want uh, verbose logging, you'll have to enable that in the Windows Event Viewer. You know, you have to you have to enable that. And the problem is that that information isn't there. Then you have to wait for the for the issue to happen again. Mm -hmm. So they do that because otherwise the normal log gets inundated with too much uh, detailed information. But now they just have a separate channel for that. So the normal. Uh, diagnostic log is still there, but the verbose one is something that also exists and just logs everything you need. You could compare it to running your cluster log at level 5 all of the time, but for okay. the event viewer. And it just dump that into the get cluster log uh, output also, together with the other relevant uh, event channels that you have. It's the system log, the failover clustering operational logs, and all the logs in uh, in regards to cluster aware updating. So today, when you do that, get cluster log. I will take a look at it uh, soon. Okay. Uh, you basically get a very nice package with all of the possible detailed information that you can send off to Microsoft in one big go. And the aim is to make that uh, information gathering uh, process as efficient as possible because in the past you ran it, you send it off, you get a request to get something more, uh, to get something else and it was a bit back and forth between you and support and the aim is to make that as streamlined as possible. Yeah, so okay. they're, they're getting there. That's nice, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's my it's my uh, opinion or my, at least my, my, my thought that they base the, these improvements on the issues, the practical issues they see when giving out support what's missing. So they're trying to cover all that. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a good one. Another one which is very interesting, uh, which is perhaps not uh, only related to, to clustering, but it's very interesting in a clustering scenario like uh, Hyper-V hosts. Why? Because Hyper-V hosts have a lot of memory normally, and all that memory is being used mainly by the virtual machines. So that means that a lot of the information you need for 99% of all the troubleshooting on the host, all that information in the memory actually has nothing to do with the problem, at least in 99% of the cases. But if you need detailed information, the problem is you need to get from the default to the complete memory dump. But the complete memory dump on a large memory host with Hyper-V is yeah. humongous. So that gives you problems, problems like, hey, how do I even find a host that has f half a terabyte of free space to, drop, to dump a uh, memory dump on? Mm. That's, that's, most, most people don't have it anymore. Uh, my, my, my hosts mainly have uh, smaller SSDs just for the uh, 
operating system of the host, and all the rest are CSVs for the, for the virtual machines. Mm -hmm. uh, large logs are also a, a pain to collect and copy around or upload to Microsoft. Yes. Yeah, it takes time. And, so there, yeah. and there's even a privacy problem, maybe, if you, if you dump the memory of the virtual machines, right? They yeah. are maybe useful information in there if you have a domain controller and you dump the memory maybe yeah. there are some passwords in it also yeah. and it, it, that even gets worse if it's uh if you're a hoster and there are standards on yeah. your own company so there's all kinds of practical and operational issues with that yeah. so now we've got this new thingy that's called an active memory dump and basically what it does is it takes the information of a complete memory dump but it filters out all the the, the memory information that's not relevant. So everything that has to do with those virtual machines is filtered out. Okay. And you can, you can see that actually, uh, well, basically this is what we've talked about. You can see this actually if you look at uh, how it's configured. You can configure it in the GUI as we saw just there on the other screen uh, shot. But you can also set it in the registry. Uh, what you do is you set crash dump enabled. Uh, if you set it to one, that means a full memory dump. But then you create a new one that says filter pages and you set it to true, one. And then it's being filtered. And those two parameters actually determine that you have an active memory dump instead of a complete or full memory dump. Okay. Now, the silly thing is that the documentation at the moment says that if you do this via the registry, you have to reboot the host. And you, you're not supposed to reboot the host if you do it via the GUI or something. It's a bit confusing. I wonder why that is. So I, I even asked Microsoft, so why is this? Are you going to fix this or what's, what's the point here? But there's two ways of doing it. You either do it in the GUI or in uh, the registry. And the registry, of course, you can manipulate that via PowerShell. Uh, the funny thing is that filter pages uh, entry that doesn't exist. So it's one you create and one you set to zero. And if you want to mimic the GUI behavior completely with the PowerShell and the registry, you should remove it as well if you move away from active memory dump. If you want to go back to the default or to another option, you should remove that filter key because the GUI does remove it. The GUI does not set it to zero. Okay. So uh, question, Didier. Uh, if you set it with the GUI, uh, will it work or do you have to reboot? Did I, you I test it? A, I've tested it a couple of times. But, yeah. And as far as I know, it works. But... As with as with all things in, in technical previews and especially this one, it's it's a it's a bit of a, a pain to test you know, the memory dumps of such large memory uh, virtual machines. So I'm I'm gonna have to rerun this uh, this exercise with with in the home lab with a lot less memory, so I can I can test a bit uh, faster. But uh, the first the first impressions I got that it just works in the GUI. Okay. So, Anyway, I, and, I and we have to mention we are now at TP4. You said that before, TP4, but yes. uh, maybe when uh, when the conference is, we hope TP5 will be out and that it will be more stable. We assume because it's uh, more to the production to the production code and so on. Yeah. yeah. So this is now we're talking about TP4. Yeah, TP4. That's the newest um, we have. That's basically the registry as it is by default. So crash dump enabled is on seven, which is the default, uh, which is the auto dump. And then if you enable uh, active memory dump, you'll see that crash dump enabled is set to one, which basically means a full memory dump. Mm -hmm. But then we have the entry, the D word value filter pages, which is on one. And then you have an active memory dump. And I've tested this and uh, the results are very significant. Uh, I, I tested it with a large host, and I saved about 320 gigabytes of uh, uh, space on that memory dump, because basically I could not even create a full memory dump almost. I, uh, I had to make sure I did it on a host that had an extra partition where okay. I could really dump the, uh, the memory. To, I, I, I added a disk to that server just to be able to, to create a memory dump. Okay, you, you saved 320 gigabytes, but how yeah. much memory had the host? Well, so had uh, it... 300 and, and how, how much was 380 or something. Okay, uh, yeah. so but, it was not a 512 uh, gigabyte host, no, it was no, no, no. something uh, 384 or so would be an answer. Yeah, you, 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 had to, you had to realize, I had to, I had to find some old hardware to test with, you know. Yeah, I know, you, you are such a... <laughs> 
and such a show off. I had to find hardware with with less than a less terabyte than, of memory, of course. <laughs> Sorry, Didier. I love your environment. I I I I don't have a, a host with uh, 300 uh, or 500 gigabyte of of memory. <laughs> Those those were the improvements, right? In in, in troubleshooting, and yeah. they're, they're 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 nice little extras to have. They're they're really uh, streamlining that process, smoothing it out. Uh, it's getting to a point where it becomes ever more efficient. And I, people people might say that's that's not the real uh, the real benefit of uh, we're getting from the new versions, which is true, but it's something that shows that the product is maturing and being. Uh, honed into perfection, right? Yeah, if you have trouble, uh, this this helps a lot. Yeah, and of course, you shouldn't forget, there's a lot of other enhancements which we are going to be talking about at the conference, but we don't have time for those now. So we you just took a couple of out that are easy to demo, but that do have a value to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of those is the cloud witness. Yeah. And the cloud witness is uh, important for a couple of things. Uh, basically, it leverages Microsoft Azure, as, a, as a, the arbitration point for uh, Quorum. Uh, it's uh, Azure Blob Storage, it's not the file share. Uh, that has a reason. The reason for that is that the file share is based on uh, Ackling. So it needs a domain, it needs uh, NTFS permissions to be set on user accounts, which basically doesn't exist in Azure Blob Storage. Uh, so uh, the Azure Blob Storage uses a different method of doing so, and uh, that's uh, the key, the access key. Uh, but this also means that if you would use a file share in, uh, in Azure, you have that same problem. It's all based on REST. It's all based on accessing with, a, with, a, with, a, with an access key. Mm -hmm. So you can't set uh, AD permissions on it or MTFS permissions on it, which you need to do with a file share. And basically, I've, I've, even, I've, I've actually tried to do that. I just tried it because when you run into the issue that you want a, a, a file share witness, uh, you should say, hey, we already have that. Why do we need a cloud witness? Well, basically, the cloud witness is a file share witness. It has exactly the same functionality, bar, of course, the security settings. Uh, and why do we want one in the cloud? Well, ideally, a file share is located in a third location. Not ideally, it, it, it has to be if you have uh, uh, two data centers or, yeah, or, or even two rooms where, you, where your uh, um, cluster lives, it's, it's stretched. Uh, what does it help to have the file share? And one of those, if that's gone, your witness yeah. is gone and your part is yeah. gone. So your whole yeah. cluster is gone. Huh? Sure, but you, you could say you could use 4.4 and 4.12 and you could even use 4.21 or something. I mean, you can be creative and fake it or you know work around it what, what did people do people tended to to try and leverage uh, a branch office but that wasn't as that that brought into the prop the, the issue of reliability yeah uh, uh, please don't put it on the on the, the PC of your secretary or the receptionists <laughs> I'll be a good it's idea. maybe it's maybe turned off at, in the evening so that's not good there we go yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or it's just uh, an unreliable site with with uh, with a non-important server where nobody really cares about it. They're all very bad candidates, basically. Yeah. Uh, the other, the other, the other workaround we saw is that people actually uh, put a VM in Azure and on that VM created a file share and then they extended the the AD to the to Azure to to be able to use the file share. Uh, which works, but it's a bit of a tedious and a convoluted exercise just to get that little quorum functionality. Yeah, and it's maybe so, a little bit expensive because a VM has, I think, a much higher price than uh, this Azure Blob Storage thing. Yeah, this Azure Blob Storage is, is like, and it, it's, it's accessed so few times and there's so much, so little data uh, used over there. So, uh, Possibly it, it would be the, the the most cheap witness, uh, let's say, option you'll ever find or have. We we, course, we we don't know yet, but uh, I hope I hope so. And uh, I, I'd be surprised. We'll we'll have a look at a couple of statistics uh, later of a cloud witness of mine. 
Okay. But the thing, but the thing is here, even even if a VM, even if it costs a little bit of money, uh, if you're using two sites and uh, uh, stretched clusters, or you know, it's not like you're in a, in a, in a low budget environment anymore, yeah. right? And there is already some money or, or investment involved. You're right. But, but, but the good thing here is, of course, that uh, you get rid of all that overhead because it's a lot of work just to get a file share. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need to do that. Yeah. So well, please wait, 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 wait. Didi, I'm from Germany, and you know we Germans have a little bit security. Um, how you how you put it right? Uh, you are sensitive to your privacy. And, it, yeah. yeah, exactly. And if I put something like a cloud witness or something like a, a cluster quorum into the cloud. We have to talk a little bit about the data that is in there because I know that a lot of people think, oh, there is much more information that, that that's really there. So the file share witness is not like a disk witness and uh, we have to explain that. It's basically a file with a, with a grid and a timestamp. Yeah, exactly. So there is no information about the workloads in the cluster, not about the VMs, not even the names, nothing. It's it's only like a, like a timestamp and a number for the cluster yeah. that he knows yeah. where it is. Yeah. Okay. Basically, that's it. Okay. So basically, it, it also has exact the same functionality. So if you if you know the principle of a file share witness, which is this picture, we just replace this site really with Azure, and a blob storage, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And when I first thought of it, I was like, eh, is this a good idea? But the more you think about it, you're like, yeah, this makes sense. And then you do it for the very first time, and it's it's so easy. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll just run through the demo, because really, it is so easy. Okay. <clears throat> so, I, I actually, I'd be hard-pressed to do anything uh, with a file share witness today if I have the option of doing a cloud witness. The only thing, of course, you need to have is... Uh, you either need internet access from the hosts of your cluster. Yeah, from both sides. Yeah, or you need to have some kind of a site-to-site -side VPN or express route or whatever. Somehow, somehow your your cluster nodes will have to be able to talk to the blob storage. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's either internet or an extension somehow uh, to that to that blob storage, uh, and that for some people might be an issue. Yeah. In high secure environments, there might be absolutely no internet access to outside. There might also be no uh, provisioning of uh, VPNs or ex uh, express route or whatever for Putin, as they say in Germany. But the good news is that uh, you still have that on-premises file share option or just your 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 good old very reliable disk witness, which yeah. is certainly not a, a bad option. Far from it's 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 probably the best option. Yeah, because would, it, I would agree. Well, yeah, but uh, some scenarios cannot use a disk witness. So then it's file share or cloud, and then you have to make the the you know you have to make the balance. What am I what am I going to use? Mm. Uh, but if you are that security aware, you might also have the money for the third side. Mm. So I think I think with these three options, all bases are being covered. So. Yeah. So you said uh, it's maybe not possible. It's it, it's sometimes not supported to do to do a disk witness when you have something yeah. like a stretch cluster. Microsoft yeah. is not supporting a disk disk witness. I've seen it with replication of uh, maybe a loon or so, but this is not supported. To be clear, yeah. you can be you can be creative, but you can be too creative as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's demo this, right? Yeah. Let's let's uh, let's go there. Let's. Up. Because this is a showcast. It's not a, a it's not a slide viewing cast, yeah. right? But sometimes before you show something, you have to. I know, I know. I'm I'm teasing you. Yeah. Are you teasing me? Really? Yes. Oh, you naughty boy. Hey, let's first take a look at that get cluster from a 2012 yeah. uh, R2 cluster. So basically, um, this maybe is what, uh, Didier, first yeah. first to mention, not everyone is maybe familiar with a with a cluster lock. So it is possible to turn on a cluster lock function or a cluster lock option in the cluster, and you get a lot of information in a separate file. Yeah, right. and you can determine the level of logging. So yeah. you can set it to to level five, which is very high, and then you collect all the possible, the most possible amount of details. 
But what, what we're looking at here is a screenshot from uh, from a cluster lock on a 2012 R2 cluster. And it's basically line after line after line of information, which is very valuable to Microsoft, but it's not the most easy to read and to parse. And also, if you look at this, this is the timestamp. Yeah. Uh, how do you know what time it is? You actually don't. The, the guy who created it, he said, use local time, perhaps. Yeah. But you, the, the guy who receives this file, well, if he doesn't tell you, you don't know. Uh, and also, all the information is in there, but it's not it's not super uh, organized. So what so what did they do? What did they do? Let's let's just have a look. This is exactly the same thing. It's the cluster log from a 2016 technology preview. Oh, that's uh, that's looking nicer. Yeah, right? and look at this. You get the build number. It says UTC, which is GMT actually, uh, local time plus the time zone offset. Yeah. If I was using uh, daylight saving time, it would be mentioned here, mm -hmm. and it says the time zone offset is 60 minute or one hour. So I know that I'm one hour ahead of GMT, and I don't have uh, my uh, daytime savings enabled on this node. And it does this per node, because if I look now, uh, I think I normally this one here. Oh, this is very fresh. You just prepared it before the screen as a yes. screencast, right? Cool. Nice, isn't it? But yes, it is. I left this one on Pacific time, so here you have this other scenario. Okay. So you see, so you see very well that uh, what 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 the real time is that's used in the log. Okay. So they, they just show it to you, right? And then what they do is they gather these the cluster information. Uh, uh, based on based on the, the, the groupings you have in your cluster, the groups, the resources, you get uh, the network, the nodes, the network interfaces, and it's all in comma separated values. Yeah. So all the information you might want to need about the volume used, the logs, the cluster partitions, it's all here. That's cool. Yeah. I, I didn't and see that, that before. I didn't play with played with it. So it's a big difference in readability and usability yeah. and information that's being entered. It also dumps those system logs in there. Mm -hmm. And if you go on, now let's scroll a bit here because it's all <laughs> it's very long. <laughs> you see this verbose one. This yeah. is the cluster diagnostic log, that new yeah. event with the verbose logging on, the new channel they have. Yeah. They also dump that in here. So and if you continue... Oh, you have even debug information there, though. So you have yeah. a very big uh, uh, lock level, right? Yeah. So I think it's set to 5 at the moment. Okay. Should, should this is... it's, it's my lab. But this is basically what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Cool. And that makes a huge difference because in one swoop, you just get it all the information you wanted and you sent it off to Microsoft. So no more going back and forth, collect this for me, uh, enable this for me. Basically, 99% of all the information they need for 99% of the use cases are in here. And one, you one can use the lock also. It's not only for Microsoft. Of course, uh, of course. If you have some problems with a cluster, you can look yeah. into the lock and maybe find the, the solution. But normally, normally you'll find the issue, but the solution will, won't be. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that's yeah, that's that's, right. that's, the, that's the annoying thing about it. If you, if you want, uh, and perhaps for people who are uh, using PowerShell or new to PowerShell, uh, this this is the only thing I, I found annoying about. It's still a point of of discontent I have with uh, with the get cluster log. They they have this parameter called the time span, but it's not a time span. It it wants minutes. Okay. So. So, time span in minutes. <laughs> yeah, so you can create a new time span all you want and put it in here. It's not going to work. The only thing that works is total, dot total minutes. Yeah. So this is my little beef. This is actually not a time span. Is it? <laughs> well, it's not a time span. It's it's really a time span, literally, but functionally but in, wise, in PowerShell, it's it's minutes. Okay. <laughs> so this is my little beef, right? Uh, and this is a change request. Make this a real time span. Come on. <laughs> Uh, now about rename the, the rename the the option. Yeah. Uh, now about the file share with this. Uh, yeah. This is my little uh, 2016 lab, lab cluster. Yeah. And uh, if you if you look at the cluster, let's have a go here. 
you know, normally the GUI will show you some nice information. Uh, you see I have storage costs. So, Didier, we had a little bit of an audio problem uh, and uh, we restart with, you were uh, t telling us about your little beef with the time span, right? And yeah, then yeah, the yeah. audio went off, so... Oh. Yeah. But good, we had that little beef uh, <laughs> mentioned and covered, so we're done. Let's <laughs> go and talk Skype's a bit about... from Microsoft. Maybe you, you mentioned uh, your beef one, one time Once? too much. <laughs> could, could have been, could have been. <laughs> Well, it was a small. It was a small uh, sanction because we were online again. Okay. Uh, so here we're looking at uh, my my lab cluster, uh, and in a cluster, as you know, you can configure the quorum settings. Uh, you can. Well, let's do the, the. You can choose a disk witness, a file share witness, and now you can sh choose a, a cloud witness. Okay. And you only have to type in the the. Uh, the storage account name, yeah. the storage account access key, and the endpoint. And if you're in Western Europe, the, the United States, this is the one. Right? Okay. I, don't, I only think there's a couple of others or one other. Maybe if Germany once gets their own German Azure cloud or something, you'll have another endpoint. I don't know. Yeah, uh, the German cloud, yes. Yeah. So, this is, so, so this is via the GUI, mm -hmm. but you can also do this via... Uh, uh, PowerShell, of course, and basically it's exactly the same. You just uh, specify the, the account name that you want the cloud witness and your access key. So I haven't tested this one. Let's see if this one works. Yeah, and, my, I, and I, will, Azure, I will blow your access key. Yeah. So if my cloud, if my uh, access, uh, hey, look at that. It's configured. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yes. So let's cancel this one and let's have a look. Can we... Normally, of course, we should be able to see this beautiful uh, cloud witness here somewhere. It shows up normally in the GUI as well. Doesn't, no. No cloud witness to be shown. It's Let's true. refresh. Let's refresh. Uh, there it is. Oh, and one, then it has a nice icon, right? It has a nice icon. So yeah. basically, either the GUI or PowerShell, and that's it. And with the same ease, you can just, if you know the name of your uh, disk witness, you can go back to disk witness or an on-premise file share. Uh, it's it. That's it. And of course, you need to do some work in, in Azure, but that's not that's not the biggest part. Yeah. Uh, I've got I've got my subscription open here, and I'm I'm counting on your discretion, of course, uh, Karsten, to make sure. Yeah, we that's... will we will <laughs> we will blow it, of course. Yeah. What what you should look at is uh, I've opened it when I ha when I had only one cluster in there. Yeah. Now I've added a cluster, so basically, if I refresh this one, let's hope I didn't time out here. Come on. No, it wants me to sign in, of course. Yeah, there we go. Sign in again. And it's loading. Normally we should see two entries now. Yeah, well, yes, yes, there are. There we go. So this is the one I added just now. Okay. So this is one uh, storage account with a blob. In that blob, uh, I have my uh, MSFT Cloud Witness. Yeah. Uh, the URL for it, and there's two entries in there, in this blob. One was the cluster I already added, and basically this is the cluster grid, and it has a timestamp, and the size is, well, zero. So it doesn't consume, it almost doesn't consume any resources. And if you if you look at the registry of that, uh, of that lab cluster, it's open here. You see this one? Mm -hmm. Cluster instance ID, well, that's how you find your cloud witness. It's the cluster instance ID. Okay. And if you if you look at your your blob, let me take this one out of the way. If you look at your your blob here, uh, you can have your settings, but you have all your your statistics here, and it's it's very very few uh, that network traffic is. It's 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 basically just sitting out there. The nodes are talking to it once in a while. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing else happening there. Yeah. So and it's a blob, and of course a blob. If you look at the settings, you will see things like the access keys, 
and you normally have to because you want to be able to do maintenance and stuff. Uh, there's a there's blog post on this. I'm writing a blog post on it. It will be online for quite soon, I hope. Uh, but this is just to give you a quick pointer as to what a cloud witness is and how you set it up. Uh, it's very easy. It's very cheap. Uh, the only issue I think you might have with it is that you need a connection to Azure in some way. Yeah. VPN, Express Route, Internet, and that might not always be possible. But otherwise, I have found this to be one of the most easy to use witness solutions for a cluster I've come across. And I was a bit I was a bit wary at first, but once I've I've used it, now it's like, hey, this is easy. Yeah, you're right, can. you're right. Um, sure. But I have some customers in Germany who are not able to connect their systems yeah, sure. anyway to the outside world. So they have to go with a, with a file share witness or yeah, they, can, they will not be able to use the cloud witness. But I think for the yeah. others it's a very nice option. Yeah. And especially it, the, there is more need for it when we get to the stretch cluster. Yeah? Yeah. So... so. Uh, there is but something new about that, right, in TP or in Windows 2016. There is something new about that as well. Uh, it's become site-aware, which is very interesting, and we'll be talking about that at, uh, at the Data Center Conference. Yeah, uh, you, and, and, you are and the open cloud it. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> by the way, that, that cloud business has another use case. It's, yeah. the, it's the non-domain joint, the word group cluster. Okay. Because then you have your disk witness or, or a cloud uh, witness. The file share with the Acklink based on on uh, node accounts to uh, to a file share in, in a work group scenario doesn't work that well anymore, does okay. it? Okay. So, so it opens up all kinds of new uh, possibilities and capabilities. But for today, I'm, uh, we're gonna we're gonna call it quits, and I'm gonna I'm gonna point you to to this little event here. To the, <laughs> there to you talk will about talk about all the. All the new cluster things you can fit in your talk. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm going to play it smart. So there's a couple of new things like uh, Storage Spaces Direct uh, that, that I will hand off to other specialists that will be going in-depth into that subject. But, of course, I have to mention it because it's tied into the clustering thing. <laughs> I know. There is uh, so much stuff going on, and uh, I will talk actually about the Storage Spaces Direct thingy, and yeah. there is so much other storage stuff also especially with clustering yeah, most of the storage clustering. stuff work together with Hyper-V with clustering and so on uh, it's quite hard to not talk in one talk about the the enhancement and the other in the in the in the other area right yeah but, but the good news is the conference gave me the opportunity to talk about everything that's new or enhanced in clustering yeah. but for the details that are, that are not strictly uh, related to clustering or, or that are way, way too huge to, to discuss in one session, I can point to my colleagues who are going to go into depth. Yeah, yeah. And I still need to coordinate with you to find out who they all are. <laughs> because who's doing, who's doing replica? Who's doing replica? <laughs> so uh, please scroll a little bit uh, uh, down. There we have the speakers. Um, the conference is in Germany, and uh, the main target of the audience is uh, is uh, German-speaking people. So uh, don't be offended, but we have a lot of German speakers. But we have we have also a lot of international speakers. And I'm, I'm now looking at Damien Flynn, and I'm thinking Damien and German. That's that's not going to work out. <laughs> so let's begin from the start. Please click on the first bubble down there. Um, no, 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 don't click on Damien. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You have this little... Oh, of, of course. <laughs> what is of course? It's, a, it's an ancient photo. You don't have a beard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to be on the bubble. Uh, this thing is moving all the time. That's a yes. problem. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a problem. I see a lot of familiar faces. I, I Basically, this is not a conference. This is a, a book with the... Who's who's in Microsoft Technologies in Europe? It's a come together, right? <laughs> oh, look at this. Yes, Ben is also there. Ben, ben is there, and, and Mr. Finn himself. Mr. Finn is there, yeah. And, and Ben Halen, so look at that. The, new, the next generation is arriving. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of cool. And, oh, Marcel and, and Bernard Trish. Uh, he's a legend in, in his own right. I mean... Yeah, he is. Oh, and, and of course, Benedict, who, who left us, sadly, to, to join... 
some technology company somehow. Yeah, he's now a Microsoft uh, TSP, <laughs> and he's in a very special team. It's called the Black Belt Team. So, like, yeah. like if you are in karate or we have judo, is do you have judo yeah. also? Uh, yeah, we, we, we have it. And there, there is a black belt. Is I think the the most experienced ones uh, have the black belt, right? Yes, and you have dance or something first, second, or whatever. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of great speakers. Thomas Maurer is there uh, yeah. from our Hyper V buddies. Maybe you go back. I'll go back a bit. Does that work going back? And um, normally it should. <laughs> in my process, it works. <laughs> Uh, Daniel Berman is there as well. Uh, Bernard is there, yeah. This nice guy with this thinking expression. You always look like if you are doing hard brain work on the pictures. Basically, right? basically I was just staring in the abyss of the Grand Canyon. When that <laughs> no, that's not true. Huh? Is that, that true? No, no, that is true. This yeah. is true. Oh. This, this is me. This is, this is taken half an hour, an hour after I first ever laid eyes on the Grand Canyon, okay. and I we sat there for hours, quietly, standing, sitting, and just looking, gazing at that magnificent sight. That's so great. Uh, so That's why I'm... So let's, uh, when, let's talk a little bit about the speakers, and then we should maybe mention <laughs> our Grand Canyon video. It's, it was such a great one. So let's talk. We have here Thomas Maurer. He's also, he was a Hyper-V MVP. He's now a... Everybody here is a cloud and data center management MVP. It's like it's quite boring. Uh, I see only... Mark Van Eyck. That was that was like Mr. Wap and now Mr. Action. Uh, sorry, uh, Wap, I should say. Right? <laughs> now maybe oh. he's Mr. Azure Stack. Then we have. Um, How do you pronounce that? Moss. Yes, uh, Microsoft uh, Azure Stack, yeah. Um, then we have from the product group, Lars Eva. He's also in the Microsoft Hyper-V product group. That's nice. Uh, we will have a nice uh, presentation of Raphael Kölner. He's not, he's, I think he's not known uh, in our area. He's an Office 365 MVP and a lawyer. So now, a lawyer? <laughs> yes, he's a lawyer, and he will talk okay, about... Yeah. Let me let me close out of here. <laughs> you will talk about um, cloud and um, laws. Okay. And then we have Matt McSpirit. Uh, of course, you know him. He is an uh, yeah. evangelist from Microsoft. Uh, he's doing a lot of lot of uh, um, MVA courses, uh, talks about stuff, and. At the end, there was another MVP uh, colleague right. from Germany. Right. Is um, it's uh, Niels Kaczynski. Um, he will also do a nice Hyper-V talk. And there are two speakers uh, missing. Only two. One of them is uh, Damien. Not Damien. Uh, Damien is, is, Damien Damien is there, but Tudor is also. Tudor. Oh, and he will do something about uh, security, and maybe he will show a little bit of life hacking. So oh, now, nice. so now you nice. mentioned with this speaker lineup, I have 25 well-known speakers. It's quite hard to do the tracks. We have five tracks, and <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I'm thinking about how to place the people because I want to see some sessions. Also, it's very hard. It's very hard, but. Yeah. Maybe we have a surprise for our, for our attendees uh, that the, that the, uh, all the presentations will be online. Yeah, oh, so, that would be cool. So I, I I think so. We will we will get that that all the pre presentations will be online. So if you attend the conference, you have the chance to see the all the presentations you missed, and uh, that's hard. That's it's hard for me uh, because I'm now setting up the the tracks and it's boy it's so hard so much interesting stuff <laughs> i can imagine <laughs> so maybe you go to our to our website the hypervamigo.net website and uh, we will talk a bit about our last uh, adventure right uh is it a dash dash e dash amigos.net <laughs> uh. i don't see you typing there uh, I'm, I am typing, so... Yeah. Ta-da! There we are. Ta-da! And... Uh, yeah, we here. Had, 
this chat at the Grand Canyon and uh, maybe you press on it. We don't see the video. We can you can do the video without sound. Yeah, let, let me. <laughs> no, no. I, I like this let, let me. Okay, <laughs> you'll you'll get the intro and then I'll fast. No, 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 you don't have to play. <laughs> I love it <laughs> with the two pep peppers. <laughs> yeah. I'm still not sure who's who here, but <laughs> uh, maybe I'm the red pepper or the green. I don't know. <laughs> so maybe you can jump a little bit ahead. Yeah, look at that. I I don't see it yet. But I don't see it yet. It, this was really amazing. We are. Do you remember this? Uh, <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. Behind us, uh, uh, if you if you walk walk back maybe f two two three meters, there yes. were, there, uh, there it's falling down, right? Yes. So this was a little bit scary. <laughs> well, we, we we were facing the other way. That was a good idea. Yeah. And we and we, and we also made a deal that we would stay in our spots. Yeah. And and. Normally, when I'm talking, I have this tendency to start walking around, Same back way. and forward. <laughs> that, that, that was something we were not supposed to do no. during that talk. We were not. Uh, maybe you jump into the uh, middle of the video. And, there, and there should be there another is, view. And there is, a, there is a little trick in staying in your spot. Yeah. And you find something to, put, to, to rest your foot on. <laughs> and you start leaning against it. But then you know, this is where I need to be. I, if I lose touch with this stone, I'm going in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> there was another one. It was not so dangerous than the one before, but look at this nice view. Uh, it's yes, really it's, nice. Uh, it's, very, it's very nice. And uh, we, we if have... you haven't been there, I really, I really think you should go yeah. ahead. Yeah, and uh, you told me so much about the Grand Canyon. I, I thought, okay, Didier, uh, maybe it's enough. You are so fascinated, and uh, it, is, it is a hole in the ground, right? And then I it's a hole in the ground. It's a it's a big it's a it's a big giant hole in the ground, Carson. <laughs> maybe you. But I, could, the... I convinced you to get into a car with me and drive over there. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You know, don't see it very well. But the video is better, but this is another great view. Um, uh, where we we are really near to the abyss, or how it's called in English. Yeah, the abyss. Or, yeah? yeah, cool. So it was quite memorable the the, the visit there and the talk, and it was between Wim One and uh, the MVP summit, right? This is uh, early November, so. Uh, yeah, I, I I would have to stress to people that both Carson and me, whilst we are amazingly popular and uh, <laughs> highly respected experts. <laughs> We haven't quite reached the level where we hump on a jet, fly over to the Grand Canyon, do a little video, and just fly back home, you know, just because we can. Well, uh, we could once, probably, <laughs> and then we'd pay for it for the rest of our, our year or something. But yeah. uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was the right moment to do it. Yeah, uh, it was. We were, between that, uh, the VMOM conference and the MVP summit, we were in Las Vegas. So from there, if you rent a car, uh, you go for it. Yeah. And we did. And I'm so happy we did because uh, it's a magnificent sight to see again. It was a great experience. Yeah. And for okay. all the people who commented to me like, what the, are you doing talking about technology whilst you're at the Grand Canyon? <laughs> oh, trust me, we went for walks and we yeah. did look around. And we even found some local wildlife yet. Uh, yeah, we, we saw, the, <laughs> we, we, I mean, I nearly touched a deer, right? We, we... Yes. We You're not supposed there. to touch the animals. No, I, I didn't touch it, but it was standing. We, yeah. we were walking there, and there were some deers, and uh, they even went away. We were, I, may, I was maybe two, two meters um, yeah. in front of it, and it, it was looking at me, and then it walked slowly, very yeah. slowly away. So they are not afraid of humans, right? And, they were, and it was not covered in the, in the little leaflets. In the leaflets, it says, do not approach the wildlife. Yeah. There was nothing in that leaflet about what you were supposed to do if the wildlife came to you. 
<laughs> yeah. right. Okay. So Didier, I think uh, I think let's let's wrap it up. Uh, we we did again a, a, a showcast, and uh, we will do more. Uh, you you were right. Uh, I was very very busy, and uh, I think you were too. And now we have to talk. We have new stuff to talk about because when the uh, Hyper V 2016 clustering storage is coming very soon, and uh, the the versions. Uh, are now more mature, so we can actually really do some showcasts and show some stuff, right? Yeah, we're getting there. And TP, TPV5, I hope, you know, if, if it arrives for the conference, uh, I'll have this decision to make. Do I touch the demo environment or not? <laughs> I, I, as I know you, you will touch it. <laughs> ah, just give away all the surprises. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Didier, let's uh, let's uh, uh, call it a day, and uh, okay. I think this uh, was a nice episode. Uh, thank you, and uh, we will do another one soon. And uh, I hope we will do one before the conference in uh, in March. Uh, no, it's not in March; it's in May, the 12th yeah. in Düsseldorf. Um, I was already panicking there for five seconds now. <laughs> well, it's not it's not the 12th of March, is it? It's the 12th of May, right. <laughs> okay, so bye-bye, Didi. Bye-bye.